In today's video from Free Pilot Training, I've got a really important lesson for you on how to use the altimeter. You're probably going to see questions about this on your oral and your written exam, so stick around and let's knock out some studying. Aircraft calling, safe position. So check this out. Take a look at the VFR day minimum equipment requirements in FAR 91205. If you'll notice, you have to have an altimeter anytime you fly an airplane under visual flight rules. And if an altimeter is that important to VFR flight, you should definitely know how to use it. And that's what this lesson is about today. But before we can talk about how to use it, there's a couple things we need to talk about first. Let's start by talking about the different types of altitude. We have indicated altitude, true altitude, pressure altitude, absolute altitude, and density altitude. Indicated altitude is just like it sounds. It's whatever your altimeter is reading. And this is true regardless of what your altimeter is set at. So the indicated altitude on this altimeter is 625 feet MSL. It's important to note that indicated altitude is not always accurate. Our real altitude is called true altitude. And this is our actual height above sea level. Now in a perfect world, we'd want our indicated altitude to match our true altitude. And while it's pretty rare to get them to match perfectly, we're going to talk about how to get them as close as possible here in just a minute. Next we have absolute altitude. And this is simply our airplane's height above the surface. And we express this in AGL. And even though your true altitude might stay the same, your absolute altitude will go up and down with the terrain. And unless you have a radar altimeter, you'll have to calculate this if you want to know your absolute altitude. It's not that hard to do though. All you have to do is subtract the ground elevation from your true altitude. For example, let's say I'm flying at a true altitude of 2,500 feet MSL. If I fly over this airfield in Lawrence, Kansas that has an elevation of 833 feet, all I have to do is subtract 833 from 2,500. And this gives us an absolute altitude of 1,667 feet AGL. The next type of altitude that you need to be familiar with is called pressure altitude. Pressure altitude is the height of something above the standard datum plane. This is an imaginary line that we draw where the air pressure equals 29.92 inches of mercury. But remember, 29.92 inches is only the average, so this line can be above sea level. Sometimes it can also be below sea level, but it's rarely right at sea level. And when it is, we call this the standard day. Now you can get your altimeter to read pressure altitude by spinning this little knob until the Colesman window reads 299 or 2. And with the altimeter in this configuration, it's now telling you your height above the standard datum plane. Well, why do I care about this? Well, at higher pressure altitudes, the performance of your airplane is significantly reduced. And this is mostly due to the lack of oxygen which helps your engine produce power. And while your true altitude may not actually be that high, if your pressure altitude is, then your aircraft still might not perform the way it should. The next type of altitude that you need to be familiar with is called density altitude. This is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. As you're probably already aware, at lower altitudes, the air molecules are more tightly packed together. This creates a higher static air pressure at low altitudes. But as the temperature rises, this pushes the air molecules apart, which lowers the air pressure from the ground all the way up to the top of the atmosphere. So because of that, when you have high temperatures, you get two big problems. Low air pressure means poor aircraft performance. First, there are less air molecules for the propeller to push the aircraft forward. That means there are also less air molecules for the wings to create lift. Engine performance is also decreased, and that's because there's less air for combustion. And if you're looking for a way to remember when your airplane won't perform the way it should, remember the four H's. High, hot, heavy, and humid. Anytime you're at high air pressure, hot temperatures, heavy aircraft weight, or it's humid outside, your airplane performance could suffer. So just so you're not confused, density altitude is based on pressure altitude and temperature. And this is how we calculate aircraft performance. That being said, indicated altitude is also affected by temperature. The other problem associated with hot temperatures is altimeter error. Your altimeter is calibrated to 15 degrees Celsius. That's about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's no way to account for these temperature changes on your altimeter. That's why it's so hard to get your true altitude to match your indicated altitude. 
So that means at temperatures above 15 degrees Celsius, you'll have lower air pressure, which means that at temperatures higher than 15 degrees Celsius, you'll be higher than you think. At temperatures lower than 15 degrees Celsius, you'll be lower than you think. So right now you're probably thinking, okay, hot temperatures, I'll be higher than I think. That's really not a big deal. Worst case, I can do a forward slip or something to get myself down quicker. But at temperatures lower than 15 degrees, I'm lower than I think I am. And you can see how this could be a problem when you're coming in for a landing, especially if you're working on your instrument rating and you're not able to look outside. So how can I know exactly what altitude I'm flying at when I'm in these conditions? This particular chart comes from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, but you can also get this chart in the AIM in Chapter 7-3-1. Let's say I'm at 2,000 feet AGL and the temperature is negative 10 degrees outside. As you can see from this chart, our true altitude is 200 feet lower than our indicated altitude. And you can see, if you're in the weather, how scary this could be. Now, it's not always going to be practical to pull out this chart anytime you're flying in cold weather, but you just need to be aware that when it's colder outside, you're lower than you think you are. Now that you have a better understanding about the different types of altitude, let's talk about how we can adjust the altimeter so the indicated altitude is as close to true altitude as we can get it. To do this, you'll want to spin this little knob until the Colesman window reads the air pressure reported at the airfield. Now what I'm about to tell you next is not usually explained very well, but I believe it's important to understanding how the altimeter works. Remember the other day how I told you that air pressure changes one inch of mercury every thousand feet? Now this is true and because of that the altimeter is able to sense what altitude you're at and give you a reading. But when you get the pressure reading from ATC or some other official aviation weather source, you're not actually getting the pressure reading at the field. If this were the pressure reading at the field and you were to put that in your Colesman window, your altimeter would actually read zero. And that's because these pressure readings are corrected for elevation. That way your altimeter knows exactly what altitude you're at. And because of that, the altimeter knows that we're at 1,000 feet MSL because it's sensing a pressure of 29.12 inches of mercury. That's why, if you know your field elevation, you can actually spin that in instead of an altimeter setting. Because what you're doing is you're saying, I know I'm at 625 feet MSL, so my pressure must be 29.90 inches of mercury. That being said, getting an accurate altimeter setting is the preferred method. And that's because, in order to be accurate with the other method, you need to know the exact elevation of that spot you're sitting on when you make the adjustment. Alright, now that you've got that down, let's talk about flying in areas of different air pressure. Let's say I take off from an airfield where the altimeter setting is 3018, and I fly to another one where it's 2918. So remember, pressure decreases as we increase our altitude. So, these higher numbers mean that we're in an area of higher air pressure. And we're flying over here to an area of lower air pressure, one inch of mercury to be exact. And if you remember from earlier, that's a thousand foot pressure difference, so you can see how this could be a problem if you don't update your altimeter setting when you fly from one airfield to the next. Okay, let's say we took off and we climbed a 2,000 feet MSL with an altimeter setting of 3018. And we spun that in because that's what they were reporting at the field. So now what the altimeter does is it gives you the pressure difference between that number and what it's sensing. In this case, it's sensing 2818, so it's giving you a reading of 2,000 feet. Okay, so let's say we fly closer to the field and we still have 3018 set. So now what the altimeter is doing is saying, I'm still sensing 2818, so I must still be at 2,000 feet because he has the field pressure set at 3018, and that's a difference of 2 inches of mercury. But in reality, we know that the altimeter is 2918, so that's a thousand foot closer to 2818. So we're a thousand feet lower than we think we are, and we're only at a thousand feet MSL. So now, to help you remember that, I'll throw you that age old saying, from high to low, look out below. And if that's true, the opposite is as well. From low to high, high in the sky. Before we leave here today, I want to leave you with one more important piece of information that might end up being a test question. The bigger the numbers that you put here in the Colesman window, the higher the altimeter will read. And that's because it's taking the difference between where you tell it sea level is in that area and what it's sensing. The higher the pressure is at sea level, the bigger the difference will be between that and what the altimeter is sensing. And that means you'll be at a higher altitude. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing before you check this one out right here.
Sia. Yeah,